Any time we look at changes in the mass of a substance from a chemical reaction, we are doing a gravimetric analysis. In a past lab, we did this through a precipitation reaction. In this lab, we'll be using another method of gravimetric analysis where a substance is heated to produce a gas. We can figure out how much gas is released by measuring how much mass is lost, and that will allow us to analyze the properties of a substance. This is commonly done with hydrates and carbonates. Carbonates will readily release CO2 gas on heating, allowing a chemist to figure out the identity of a compound. A hydrate, by contrast, will release water vapor. A hydrate is an ionic compound that has water molecules as part of its crystal structure, which generally lends certain properties and colors. For example, Epsom salts are a crystal made of magnesium and sulfate, and seven water molecules to make up the crystal structure. Solid Epsom salt is actually mostly water. In this lab, we will determine the hydration of a hydrated ionic compound by heating it in a crucible and using the changes in mass to determine how many molecules of water are actually in that chemical formula. For this lab, you'll need the following materials. A Bunsen burner, a ring stand and a ring with a ceramic plate, a crucible with a lid, a pair of tongs, and some copper sulfate or an equivalent chemical provided by your instructor. The procedure is fairly simple for this lab. You'll start by weighing out an amount of your substance, weigh out about 10 grams. Our starting mass isn't that important because what we really care about in this lab is the change in the mass, but we'll be doing math with that number, so it's best to pick an easy number like 10, 15, or 20. Next, weigh your crucible and write it down. Then pour your copper sulfate and write down the weight of the crucible and the copper sulfate together. Set up the ring stand and the Bunsen burner and place the crucible on the ceramic and practice using the tongs to remove the lid and move the crucible around because once we start, you won't be able to touch it directly because it'll be really hot. Light your Bunsen burner and begin heating the crucible. Heat it for about five minutes and then check the mass. Then, heat it for another two minutes and check the mass again. When the mass has not changed for two minutes on the burner, the reaction is done. So keep putting it back on the burner, let it go for two minutes, and then wait again until you don't see a change in that mass. Write down your final mass, then subtract the weight of your crucible. This is the mass of your copper sulfate now that all of the water has been removed. Notice the color change. Next, subtract this final mass from the initial mass of your copper sulfate. The difference will be the mass of the water that left. Finally, write out the chemical reaction and convert from grams to moles. Then, divide your numbers by the moles of copper sulfate to get the exact ratio of water to copper sulfate. 